Good morning and welcome to church this morning on Sunday, the 1st of August, 2021, here at Tableview Methodist Church. Uh, if you noticed the earlier broadcast, uh, there were some audio issues with that. So this is a rebroadcast of the same service, probably with slightly different content because it's never the same twice. Anyway, our, seven, our scriptures this morning are Psalm 78, 23 to 29, Ephesians chapter 4, verse 1 to 16, and John chapter 6, verse 24 to 35. And I welcome you all in the name of Jesus Christ, which is a reminder that everybody is welcome in our community, whoever you are, wherever you are in your faith journey. Normally we'd be having church at church, and I know that we are allowed to at the moment, but just because we're, we can doesn't mean that we should. The Delta variant of the COVID virus is extremely infectious, and we're going to continue waiting until the end of August to see what we should do then. But we continue to be available. You can reach us via Facebook, WhatsApp, our telephone number, or even just give me a call and we can make a plan to meet. I'm always happy to, to oblige in some way. So I invite us to begin our service with our opening prayer. Almighty God, unto whom all hearts be open, all desires known, and from him no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee, and worthily magnify thy holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Invite us to confess our sins to God. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against all people, in thought and word and deed, in the evil we have done, and in the good we have not done. 
through ignorance, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us. Forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. We pray together as Jesus has taught us to pray, saying, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. We continue as we read from Psalm 78, verse 23 to 29. This psalm is a psalm where the Israelites are reminded to tell the following generations about what God has done for them. Yet he commanded the skies above and opened the doors of heaven. He rained down on them manna to eat and gave them the grain of heaven. Mortals ate of the bread of angels. He sent them food in abundance. He caused the east wind to blow in the heavens and by his power he led out the south wind. He rained flesh upon them like dust, winged birds like the sand of the seas. He let them fall within their camp, all around their dwellings. And they ate and were well filled, for he gave them what they craved. We also read from John chapter 6, verse 24 to 35, as the people are following Jesus after he has fed them. So when the crowd saw that neither Jesus nor his disciples were there, they themselves got into the boats and went to Capernaum to look, looking for Jesus. When they found him on the other side of the sea, they said to him, Rabbi, when did you come here? Jesus answered them, Very truly I tell you, you are looking for me, not because you saw signs, but because you ate your fill of the loaves. Do not work for the food that perishes, but for the food that endures for eternal life which the Son of Man will give you, for it is on him that God the Father has set his seal. Then they said to him, What must we do to perform the works of God? Jesus answered them, This is the work of God, that you believe in him whom he has sent. So they said to him, What sign are you going to give us then, so that we may see it and believe you? What work are you performing? Our ancestors ate the manna in the wilderness, as it is written. He gave them bread from heaven to eat. And Jesus said to them, Very truly I tell you, it was not Moses who gave you the bread from heaven, but it is my Father who gives you the true bread from heaven. The bread of God is that which comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. They said to him, Sir, give us this bread always. Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. Finally, we read from Ephesians chapter 4, verse 1 to 16. Paul writes, I therefore, the prisoner in the Lord, beg you to lead a life worthy of the calling to which you have been called, with all humility and gentleness, with patience, bearing with one another in love, making every effort to maintain the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. There is one body and one Spirit, just as you are called to the one hope of your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism. One God and Father of all who is above all and through all and in all. But each of us was given grace according to the measure of Christ's gift. Therefore it is said, when he ascended on high, he made captivity itself a captive. He gave gifts to his people. When it says he ascended, what does it mean but that he had also descended into the lower parts of the earth? He who descended is the same one who ascended far above all the heavens so that he might fill all things. The gifts he gave were that some would be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers, to equip the saints for the work of ministry, for building up the body of Christ, until all of us come to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God, to maturity, to the measure of the full stature of Christ. We must no longer be children, tossed to and fro and blown about by every wind of doctrine, by people's trickery, by their craftiness and deceitful scheming. But speaking the truth in love, we must grow up in every way into him who is the head, into Christ, from whom the whole body, 
joined and knit together by every ligament with which it is equipped as each part is working properly, promotes the body's growth in building itself up in love. Amen. Thanks be to God for his word to us. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight. We pray. Amen. We haven't been to church for a while, but in our church, we have uh, our stained glass windows, 12 of them that remind us of the story of the Bible. And one of them is the window that reminds us of the story of Exodus. And in that window, you see this big blue patch that represents the sky, it reminds us of floods and oppression and all those things that bring us down. Below it, there's this line of, of sand this orange hot sand that the people might be walking on, you can imagine. Then there's four, four sections, red, green, and two other red ones, that remind us of the people walking through the desert for 40 years. But there's that little white line that's divided into three to remind us of the Trinity. The line that reminds us of how God provided a layer of manna to shield the people from from the oppression and the difficulty of the time that they were going through, and to provide for them everything that they needed along their journey. And so I want to remind us of that picture, as we're reminded from Psalm 78 this morning, as we think about Ephesians chapter 4, as Paul writes to the people from prison, I therefore the prisoner of the Lord. And I like the way he puts that. He's not saying I'm a prisoner of the Roman authorities and I'm a victim of the oppression of the time. And we might get ourselves all pity and feel really bad about ourselves at the moment, and rightly so. We're having a difficult time. But instead of dwelling on, on the bad news of, of where he is, he turns it around. He says, I'm a prisoner of the Lord. And he allows his being in prison to be an opportunity to serve others, to make life better for others. And so by example, he leads us, but he also tells us to lead a life worthy of the calling for which we have been called to live with humility, gentleness, patience, and bear with one another in love. But what's important here is that he reminds us that we're going to have to make an effort. Make every effort to maintain the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. In prison, Paul has to make an effort. Paul has to make an effort to write to the disciples, to write to the churches, to remind them to grow, to become the people that they're meant to be. And it's so easy for us in this time to just give up on everything that goes on around us and leave it all to the professionals. But that's not possible. We all need to make an effort to maintain the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. As we thought about that, that layer of grace in that Exodus window, Paul reminds the church, reminds the people, that it's not just by effort, but each of us has been given the grace that we need to live the lives that we are meant to lead. In the imagery of Paul's mind, Jesus leads the captives in a procession through the city as he announces his victory. So when kings in those days would announce their victory, they would lead the prisoners in procession through the city, and then they would have some festival and promote various people to various positions and give them authority, etc., and so as Jesus, the king, leads his captives through the city to show us the, the victory, the gravity of his victory, he gives us gifts, gifts to be apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers. Now that's not just the professional work of ministry, but each and every one of us equipped as saints for the work of ministry, for the work of building up the body of Christ, for transforming ourselves, transforming our communities, to become the Christ-loving, Christ-following people that we are meant to be. Remember in the desert, or sorry, in Capernaum, Jesus was confronted by this crowd who were saying, hey, do another one of your tricks. We want to see some bread. That'll be delicious. Instead of being like children who just live for their ego and want everything uh, brought to them and given to them, Paul reminds us, don't be children, tossed to and fro and blown about by every wind of doctrine, by trickery, by craftiness and deceitful scheming. But rather, making that effort, we speak the truth in love. And we grow up in every way into him who is the head, into Christ. Growing up in every way, in our character, in our nature, to be more 
Christ-like, to be more loving, to be more peaceful, to be more generous, and all of those fruit of the Spirit that Paul speaks about. Or in verse 2, humility, gentleness, patience, bearing with one another in love. And so, no longer as children, speaking the truth in love, we grow up into Christ. And the ultimate goal, says Paul in verse 16, from whom the whole body joined and knit together by every ligament with which it is equipped, as each part is working properly, promotes the body's growth and building itself up in love. And so I pray that we would each grow in love this week ahead and we had learned to follow Jesus, making the effort and turning the situation that we find ourselves in around rather than saying we're a prisoner of COVID and the current circumstances, to give ourselves to the Lord and say we're prisoners of the Lord and find our freedom in all of that. So I remind you of this layer of grace that is sprinkled over your life. And I invite us all to remember that God has given us everything that we need for the moment that we're in right now. As we come to a close, I'm going to sing uh, a song that I came across by Noel Paul Stuckey. He was of Peter, Paul, and Mary, uh, called Then the Quail Came. And it's a reflection on what we read about Psalm 78, 23 to 29, and the book of Exodus and the way that God provides for the people. And I think also a bit of a reflection on the way that we grumble sometimes. Grumbling has its place, and I think God gives us grace sometimes when we grumble. But I invite you to listen to the words of the song and reflect on the message that it brings. Yeah, we were hungry and scared, wishing we never had come. Homes on our backs, dust in our hair, cursing the day we'd begun. Tell me, I ask you, a friend of mine said, was it so bad where we were? We didn't have to come here to be dead. Was what we had so unsure? Then the quail came. Falling like the dew on the ground, the quail came. Each evening I flew to be found. Taking our curses and turning around Filling our ears with those ungrateful sounds Unworthy to stand I bow down There we were Angry and naked Looking for someone to were aching, babies were crying, and each day was so much the same. I tell you people, this journey is crazy. I heard someone say in his rage, how long would it be till we realize our folly and get back to where we were safe? Then the quail Like the dew on the ground, the quail came. Each evening I have food to be found, taking our curses and turning them round, filling our ears with those ungrateful sounds, unworthy to stand. survived but we know now at last that nothing is sure except that at evening the quail will arrive then the quail came falling like 
the dew on the ground The quail came Each evening our food to be found Taking our curses and turning them round Filling our ears with those ungrateful sounds Unworthy to stand I invite you to join me with the words that appear in yellow. We praise you, God, for the world which you created and for our place in it. You have given us life that we may love and serve you. And though we have resisted your purpose and misused your gift, you have not left us in our sin, but have sent your Son, Jesus Christ, to be our Savior. We thank you that for us he became human, died on the cross, rose from the dead, and ascended into heaven. There he reigns in glory. And there he prays for us, and we believe that he will be our judge. We thank you that you have sent your Holy Spirit to bring us to a new life in Christ and given us freedom to call you Father. Therefore, with all the church on earth and in heaven, we give you our thanks and praise. We dedicate ourselves to you. Strengthen us by your Holy Spirit to do your will and bring us with all people to your kingdom. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Now, as we come to a close, I invite you just to think about, especially those people that you would normally see in church on a Sunday, as you say the grace. May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all, now and forevermore. Amen. God bless, and I pray that you have a wonderful week ahead. <music>